Hello folks, it's Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Fishers of Men video broadcast. And it's good to be here today and I want to thank you all for tuning in, for those who will be tuning in. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the, we're going to be continuing to talk about the seven vile judgments. Now in the previous one we've covered one through four and we've taken a look at how not so good those vile judgments are and so we're going to pick up from where we left off and we're going to continue on with uh going through the rest of this the vials and i almost said seals we, we, we've already done the seals we've already done the trumpets now we're doing the vials and there are three sets of judgments which is very interesting because you know, 7, 7, uh, 7, 14, and 21. Now, I don't know if that is necessarily a, um, I don't know, what, what would you say? It's it, it, um, a, um, a number, uh, you know, it's 21, it's 21 judgments in all. And I, I'm not even sure if number 21, if the number 21 is associated with anything. Um, I have this book. I'm sure you've heard of it. The Biblical Mathematics by Evangelist Ed V. Velo. And uh, let's see here. You know, 21 is the number, according to this, is exceeding sinfulness of sin. Um, <clears throat> but it, I don't know. But there are 21, there's 21 different judgment 7 14 21 7 times 3 is 21 so i don't know maybe there might be something there it could be that maybe 21 could also mean judgment i don't know uh, maybe i'm wrong on that but i don't want to get into that but we we've we've covered the the the, the seals the trumpets and now we're going to finish off tonight with the vials okay now Let's kind of do a backtrack here, and let's just kind of take some, take a little bit of time to review what vials one through four were. Okay, now in the first vial that was poured out, okay, there fell noisome and grievous sores upon those who received the mark of the beast. Okay, the second and the second vial, we saw that the seas became blood. And um, we also see that in the third one, in the third vial, that the rivers and fountains of waters also became blood. Okay, so when you take a look at vials two and three, remember we've mentioned and how when the very first, the, the very first, um, I, I don't want to say miracle, but the very first thing that Moses and Aaron did was to turn the Nile, which is or which is a river, into blood, and that was one of the starting that was the starting of the plagues in Egypt. And we see here that the the the, the sec, uh, let's see here the the um <clears throat> the th uh, the second and third are the waters being turned into blood and obviously if you have all these sores on you and if the water is turned into blood i don't think you really want to be bathing in blood just to ease up on the sores you know what i'm saying that's kind of a very not so good situation then you start getting all stinky and, and stuff like that and it just goes back to how you know it just goes back to i believe it's the trumpet judgments now, um, in the, in, and we see here also um, that in the, f see, that's the third. Okay, so the second and third. Now, the fourth one is we see that the sun has power to scourge men. And let's see here. With the, the the sun has power to scourge men with great heat, and we notice that they blasphemed the name of God, and they never repented of their they never repented of their you know of of their uh, they never repented of their sins, 
And at this point, um, they've already received the mark, so it's too late. They can't repent. <coughs> God is done with them. Amen. So let's pick up. So let's. I'm gonna read. I'm gonna go back and read the fourth, the fourth, the fourth vial, and then we're gonna continue on, and we're gonna continue on reading through the seventh vial. Okay. So if you have your King James Bibles with you, turn with me to Revelation, Revelation chapter 16, and we're gonna start in verse eight, and it says the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to, the, to give him glory. Okay? That's far, that's pretty bad. And that's, that's only the fourth vial. Okay? And reading on. In verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial. And the seed of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because they of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel pour, poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto, unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame." And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. <clears throat> and the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there, was a vo and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such was as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great, and the great city was divided into three parts, and the city of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, and every island fled away, and the mountains were not found, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, Every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Okay, so we're seeing that these are the last of the, the, the wrath being poured out. Amen. The wrath is about finished. The wrath is finished after the seventh vial, and it gets into some more judgments with Mystery Babylon. Now, let's go back and reread and let's explain some things here, okay? So, <clears throat> and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. So, we see here that the kingdom of the beast became just it was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongue for pain so there must have been some dark some heavy duty darkness that fell upon the kingdom of the beast and people were in pain because of all the previous vile judgments that have been that, that have taken place now remember back in egypt okay when when Mo, okay, so when moses and aaron were trying to set the israelites free one of the plagues that, that hit Egypt was such a heavy and thick darkness. It was such a heavy and thick darkness that you couldn't even see in front of you. It was such, it was darkness. And so we see here that dark, the kingdom of the beast was full of darkness. And then we see that people are gnawing on their tongue because of the pain I don't know about you, but any time that when, when you accidentally bite on your tongue, 
It hurts. Now, you think about this. It says, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. So they were gnawing on their tongues because they were in such agony and pain. I mean, not just the fact they were in pain because of all the the the, the boils and all the, the stuff that got that, that that were on them, but then they have to deal with the 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 pain from the from gnawing on their tongues. That must have, I mean, that is not. A good place to be, people. It is not a good place to be. Amen? It's not a good place to be. Um, <clears throat> so, in verse 11, and it says, And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. See, they're gnawing on their tongues because they're in such agony. And, and by the way, this, I mean, we're starting to see hell on earth right now. I mean, not in, but what I'm reading through is it's hell on earth. And these people who took the mark have blasphemed God. They rejected God. And now God is repaying them for their recomp recompense. Okay. Remember, um, let's see. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Let's stop right there for a second. Let's take a look at that here, okay? The wages of sin is death, okay? Does anybody know what a wage is a wage and i'm sure a lot of i'm sure everybody knows what a wage is but a wage is something you deserve okay the peop the people that took the mark of the beast which by the way is death okay and people who take the mark of the beast they are in rebellion. Remember what the remember what Samuel told Saul. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And these people that took the mark have rebelled against God and therefore are guilty of witchcraft. Amen. Now, we see here Okay, let's when we go back up to when the third angel poured... Okay, hang on a second. Um, yeah, when the third angel poured his vial, we see that the reason why it's blood is because they martyred, they had the saints of God killed and wiped out because they re because the saints of God, actually, they they had the good sense to refuse the mark of the beast, so they got... they the. They, their lives got taken because of it. So, here's the thing. When it says in verse 6 of chapter 16, For they have shed, blood, shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Okay? Now think about it. The, the wages of sin is death. A wage is something you deserve. Because they were in rebellion against God... And because, and because they, ch because they chose, the, they made the choices they made, God is repaying them what they deserve. Okay? Because of their sinful actions and the, and the sinfulness of having to rebel against God. And rebellion is the ultimate sin that I don't think anybody should be... Con Rebellion is the ultimate sin I don't think you really want to be guilty of against God. Okay? Because Lucifer rebelled against God and got and guess what? He got kicked out of heaven for it. And he will be. Okay? Here's the thing. The wages of sin is death. So now guess what? 
the people who chose to rebel by taking the mark. God is going to repay them with death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And by the way, a gift is something you don't deserve. It's given to you because somebody loves and cares for you to give you a gift. But you don't deserve it. But it's given to you. Okay? A gift is something you don't deserve. And by the way, for all those who are watching, you do not have to choose to go through all of this torment and pain and hell on earth. You can choose to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You can choose to put your faith and trust in Him. Why? Because it is only through Jesus Christ that you will be free. See, the new world order is not going to make you free. The new world order is going to keep you in bondage. It's going to basically put you to death. It may not be right away, but the new world order will send you to straight to hell in a handbasket. Amen? This is why nobody should be taking part of it, because to take part of the new world order is rebellion against God. Okay, so, <clears throat> continuing on. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, Working miracles which go forth onto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of the great uh, to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Okay, in other words, these spirits are gonna they're gonna gather everybody to go against God and His anointed. Okay, so what we see here is that these spirits, these three unclean spirits that came out of the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So think about this. There's three. So if that's nine. Huh. I wonder if that's nine. Yeah, because with three, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming. Up. So three times three is nine. So I wonder if that is, I wonder if that can be. Um, see, number nine is, is the number for fruit bearing. And so we see here that these three unclean spirits came out of the mouths of, like, frogs, okay? They were the spirits of devils working miracles, okay? I'm wondering if these spirits are... The perversion of fruit bearing, in other words, the 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 nasty, the nasty fruit, the rotten fruit, is these false miracles that these spirits were rotting, or were bringing forth. And if you think about it, you have three spirits coming out of the mouths of the bee of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. So three times three is nine, and so these these false these these miracles, you know, that could you know are, are going to eventually be perversions, which they are, um, would be a false fruit. So could it be that we see here kind of an opposite of of fruit bearing to where this is um, not fruit bearing, or in other words, it's it's bad fruit. Does that make sense? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong there, but. Check it out for yourself. That's maybe something I'm kind of curious on. That's interesting, isn't it? Now, um, for, let's see here. Okay, so, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. 
see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, the, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Okay, so here's what we see. So in the sixth seal, okay, we see that these, these evil demonic spirits that are coming out of the mouths of the beast, the, 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 the beast, the dragon, and the false prophet are gathering everyone together to go to war against God. By the way, just a spoiler alert for everybody. This is this is going to probably be the most massive spoiler. And by the way, it's not really a spoiler. Why? Because God t tells us who's going to win. God's going to win. Amen? God's going to win. So, and by the way, which team would you which you which team would you rather be on? The winning side or the losing side? You got to pick one, one or the other. You can't have both. By the way, why would you want to have both when you can be on the winning side? Think about that. So, um so in the sixth one, we have all these people that are coming together to go try to go against God and God's going to win and the antichrist is going to lose. Okay? Now, in verse 17, it says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Okay, what is done? Okay, the wrath of God is being satisfied at this moment. Okay, now, there's still more wrath to come. And the wrath is going to be against Babylon, because as we see, the Babylon has come up, and the memory has come up in God's memory. Okay? So, we see that, that the, 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 the vile judgments are wrapped up here. Okay? And we see that there's coming, there's going to be coming, um, the Lord's going to be coming back. And he's going to defeat the Antichrist. Amen. By the way, that was prophesied in the book of Daniel. Really quickly, I want you guys to hold your places in Revelation. And I want you guys to turn with me into Daniel for me. All right? Turn with me to Daniel. And uh, we're going to be going and taking a look at Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Because God, because Nebuchadnezzar, I believe, was God's servant. And... I believe that Nebuchadnezzar got was saved and he went to heaven after he after when he finally three times acknowledged that God was God. Amen. So turn with me to Daniel chapter two. Daniel chapter two, and um, let's see here. I want us to go to verse thirty one. It says, "Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image." This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut without hands. Stop right there. You know who that stone is? cut without hands that is jesus christ amen and he's going to come back and he's going to defeat the armies of the antichrist which we just read in revelation okay so this stone was cut without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces okay listen the feet is Daniel's fourth kingdom. And what is that? That fourth kingdom is a satanic kingdom that's going to mingle themselves with the seed of men. How are they going to do that? They're going to do that with the mark of the beast, which means that the people will be on the people who take it will be unredeemable. Think about that. Okay, then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken 
to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. You want to know something? This Nebuchadnezzar saw the second coming of Christ and his people came down to set up the millennial kingdom and defeated the new world order and Jesus Christ sets up his thousand year reign. Amen. Now, this is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And who, wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given unto thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these things, it shall break in pieces and bruise. And there, whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, and there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest iron, the iron mixed with miry clay." And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom should be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is, is not mixed with clay. And in, the, and in the days of these kings shall God, the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Wow. Isn't that amazing? The, G, the, the, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ is going to crush the new world order, and the new world order is going to come is going to crumble to the ground and the Lord Jesus Christ is going to set up his kingdom and it's going to be an everlasting kingdom. Amen. Now, let's go back to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation. It says, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and there was in a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give her unto the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Okay, so let's stop right there. Why did Babylon come up in remembrance come up into God's remembrance here's why I think why turn with me to Revelation chapter 3 Revelation chapter 3 so we're going to go towards the beginning of, the, of, of Revelation Revelation chapter 3 and we're going to actually, actually hang on maybe it's chapter 2 Revelation chapter 2 or 3 uh, let's see. Chapter 2. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. It says, Unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, these things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like unto fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Jezebel, is, see, Babylon is another name for Jezebel. Okay, now, it says in the next verse, 
And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. This is why Babylon came up into God's remembrance. You know why? Because she did not repent of her fornication, and God gave her a space to repent, and she repented not. This is why this came up to rem in remembrance, and to God's remembrance. It's not that God didn't forget. It's that Babylon didn't repent. Okay? Now, read what it says next. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and then they commit adultery with her, and the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Okay? So, we see here, going back to 16 now. Okay? So, we see that... Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Let me tell you something. God is going to pour out his wrath on mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. He's going to pour his wrath out. And it's not going to be pretty. Because when a person is under God's wrath... It's never a pretty thing. Okay? Now, the, the power and magnitude of this earthquake. Now, we see these earthquakes that we see is quite massive. But this one and the seventh vial, the last vial, is really bad. Okay? So... It says here that in every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there, there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven and every stone about the weight of a talent. I don't know what a talent is, but that seems pretty heavy. Uh, and men blasphemed. God, because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Now, let me tell you something. You see that throughout these vile judgments, that people have not repented of their deeds, and they have blasphemed God. Doesn't that sound really familiar to what Pharaoh did when God plagued Egypt with those ten plagues? Pharaoh hardened his heart. And he didn't repent. It's the same thing here. They hardened their hearts and they stiffened their necks. And therefore, they did not repent. And by the way, whether if they did or not, at this point, it is too late. Because they've already accepted the mark. Okay? So, let's do a quick review of all these vile judgments. Okay, let's let's the vile judgments. Let's do a quick review. Okay. The first vial poured out. Okay. It starts off with some grievous sores that people get. And the people that get these sores are the ones who have taken the mark of the beast. Okay. The second and third vials. Okay, the seas and the rivers and the fountains of waters are turned into blood, just like how when the when the the the, the Nile River in Egypt was turned into blood. Okay, and we see that they the people that have blasphemed and took the mark are worthy to drink that blood. Because remember, the wages of sin is death. Because of their sinful actions, God has, God is going to repay them with death. Not right away, but he's going to repay them. And that death is going to start very slow with these vile judgments. Okay? The fourth one, okay? The fourth one is where the sun had power 
to scorch men with great heat. And they blaspheme, and they bl and the people blasphemed God and hardened their hearts and didn't repent. Okay. The fifth angel poured out his vial. Okay. There was darkness. They were gnawing on their tongues in pain. And because and because of the pain, they blasphemed God, and they didn't re and their and because of their pains and their sores, they re they didn't repent of their deeds. The sixth angel poured out his vial. All these all these these devils that were working these miracles are gathering everyone up together, so they can fight against. They can prepare them for battle against God. In the in the battle of Armageddon. Okay, and we know who's going to win that. Okay, and the last one, the last vial is poured out, and it, and it's it is finished, it is done. That means the vile judgments are done, and the wrath is is about over, about done. It is done. Okay, the wrath is done. But there's going to be more wrath poured out on Mystery Babylon, and Babylon's going to get Babylon, and, and Babylon's going to get judged, and the the beast is going to kill Babylon. Okay, and we see that in this seventh one, we see that there is this massive earthquake, and all these things and these mountains are removed out of their place, and great hail came out came down from heaven and I'm telling you I mean people must have died and, and the earthquake and all and, and these hails okay now listen that's going to wrap up the. that's going to actually wrap up the wrath okay that's going to wrap up the wrath it's going to wrap up the wrath it's going to wrap up the wrath of God and for those who choose to rebel and for those who choose to take that mark of the beast now listen many people are being conditioned right now to receiving a mark in their right hand or in their forehead okay and so I, I, I want to tell you something believers okay I just want to encourage you. Okay? The Bible says that we are not appointed unto wrath, but to obtain salvation. Okay? Non-believers, if you're watching this and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, do not wait. Today is the day of salvation. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, you'll be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, and he came to do what he came to do, and you put your faith and trust in what he did for you on the cross, you'll be saved. Okay? Listen. Tomorrow might be too late. Okay? Tomorrow might be too late. And let me tell you something. If you don't repent and you choose to live your life in sin and you choose to take that mark, you're going to have to go through all that we just read, the seal, the trumpet, and the vile judgments. The seal judgments were bad. The trumpet judgments were worse. The, the vile judgments are way worse. And I don't think you want to be in the in a situation like that. I don't want I don't want to see you into that situation. Okay. I my hope is that you guys would repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Ask the Lord to cleanse you and to wash you in his blood. And ask the, and to put your faith and trust in the Lord for your salvation and to and to ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life as well as being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Listen, I love you guys, okay? And because I love you, I tell you the truth, okay? But listen, don't ever take my word for things. You take what I say and you match it with the Bible. And if what I said does not match with the Bible, then let God be true and every man a liar. Okay, in other words... If I'm wrong, I will have to give an account as to what I said. And I do pray and ask that the Lord will correct and chastise me for what I said and, and actually show me what I should have said. Okay? But if I'm right, then I pray that he will show you what I'm talking to you about. Amen? Listen. Um, I have to preach this. I have to preach this stuff. I know it seems doom and gloom, but I'm going to tell you something. This is I'm hoping that this will actually give you a hope. Why? Because if I preach this stuff and you realize that you need a Savior, there's the good news. There is a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. He wants you to have a relationship with Him. Amen? He wants you to be saved, and He wants you to put your faith and trust in Him and and he doesn't want you putting your faith and trust in your own works. Because without Jesus Christ, we can do nothing. And your works are as filthy rags to God. And by the way, okay, next time we're going to be talking about the great white throne judgment. And all those who end up there, okay, the books are going to be open. And you're going to be judged based on your works. And your works are not going to get you into heaven. Your works are going to land you in hell. My works will land me in hell. Okay? I can do nothing without Christ. If there's any good that I do, it's because of Jesus Christ. It's what He has done, not what I have done. My works... My works will not buy me into heaven. It does not work that way. And if my works can't buy you buy if my works cannot buy me into heaven, that means your works cannot buy you into heaven as well. So, we next time we're going to be talking about the great white throne judgment and we're also going to talk about hell. We're going to talk about the great white throne judgment, and then we're going to talk about hell. We're going to talk about hell and the lake of fire. Because I want to be able to use this opportunity to show what's going to happen if you choose to accept a mark in your right hand or in your, in your or right hand or in your forehead. Amen. Listen. I have to preach this because I am commanded by my king to do so. If I see trouble, I must blow the horn. If I don't, he's, I'm going to be held accountable. I'm going to be held accountable. Okay? So, listen. I love you guys. God bless you. Remember, next time, we're going to be talking about... We're going to be talking about the Great White Throne Judgment and the Lake of Fire and Hell. Okay? But till next, uh, and, and, uh, and also um, tomorrow, we're, probably, we're gonna probably do a live devotion, so stay tuned for that. Uh, anyways, with that said, I love you guys. God bless you. This is Pastor Brandon. I'm signing off for the evening. I love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you next time. See you. Bye.